hear me in the back if I talk here? Yes. Yeah, yes. good. Yes. That's why I'm a lawyer. I can do it up here. It's good to see you all. I want to welcome you to Capital. I saw a lot of you early on. And I may get called in the back of the room. There may be somebody who comes in because who's here from Houston? Anybody? Right. Well, I'm on urban affairs, and urban affairs oversees city issues and a lot of the city of Houston issues. So I'll watch what happens in the back. Let me tell you a little, let me give you kind of a Paul Hervey approach to the legislature. I'm probably in a more unique position than anybody you will hear from. And I'm going to tell you my history. That way you will know my background. First of all, I am the state representative for Corpus Christi, Oasis County. That's Port Aransas and Corpus Christi. However, throughout the years, I have been here at different times. And as Lois said, I at one time was the largest county state rep for the coastline. But let me tell you my history, because some of this will resonate with some of you all. I got involved in Republican politics in 1964. My dad was the Washington County Republican Party Chair in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. And I just divided the room because anybody that knows what I just said knows that's the Goldwater Miller campaign, AUH2O, is when I got involved. And my dad was a Republican chair, and he got me involved into grassroots and what we call bottom line people campaigns. I then became the state teenage Republican president of Oklahoma for two years. Uh, my dad was with Phillips 66, and that's why we lived in Oklahoma, even though my mother and father were from Kansas. And then I went to the University of Kansas, and then I went to SMU Law School, and lived in Dallas for a while. And then I moved to Corpus Christi in 1978. And I have lived there continuously. Now, why do I tell you this? Is I remember when Texas was not a two-party state, and now we're the majority party in this state. And I live in an area that is growing Republican where we need help and assistance and support. Remember how I started my intro today. When you look at the state of Texas, J.M. Lozano and I are the southernmost Republican <coughs> legislators in the state of Texas. We are not in a Republican zone, but our counties are growing and changing. And they are red today. And so you're starting to see a change because the Republican Party is educating folks on what we stand for. I think our biggest disadvantage is we haven't gotten our message out throughout the year. And today, I think we are getting the message out. So, that's my background. Then in 19... 1989, I still divided the room. I came into the legislature for the very, very first time. And I served eight years. My children were one and two years old when I went in. My daughter, Christina, who's sitting right over there, another Republican, and that's pretty strong because she attends University of Texas and she's a Republican. How about that right here? <laughs> She was born while I was in session. I served eight years, and it was a great, great opportunity. I served uh, during a different era. And it's kind of interesting because in 1997, I chose to leave. 
I wasn't under indictment. I didn't have cancer. How about that? <laughs> but I chose to leave to go raise the family because I hadn't been around the family. And I always caution new legislators that if you have small children, make sure you can spend the time as a public official and as a parent because it's a juggle match. I'll never forget my oldest son asked my wife one time, does daddy live here anymore? So I took off voluntarily and I stayed out 11 years, 11 years. And like you, I got frustrated. I looked at Washington, D.C., I looked at Austin, and I decided you got to put your money where your mouth was so I ran again in 2008, and I won. It was a very, very expensive race for 2008. But I did win, and then I've served continually. I have represented Aransas County, which is Rockport, Fulton, 80% Republican. Pretty good in South Texas. I have represented Calhoun County. I have represented Refurio County. I have represented Jackson County, San Patricio County, and of course, Nueces County throughout the years. And it's been a very, very, very great honor. But let me give you the practical side of being a legislator. And I want to kind of explain this because most people don't know what I'm about to tell you, and I'm going to tell you. A lot of legislators don't know this. First of all, the difference between a congressman and a state representative is we get $7,200 a year minus taxes and they get over $100,000. How about that? But you don't pay us a dime more because we're not to run for office for money. We run for office for service. So we get paid $7,200 a year minus taxes, it's about 400 and something dollars a month. Now here's how the legislature works, and a lot of folks get frustrated, but it's based on the state constitution. I'm going to tell you a lot of this I think is prehistoric, but this is the truth. We meet once every two years for 140 days. We started January 13th. But did you know the state constitution says you cannot take formal action for 60 days? So some of you are sitting here, why aren't you passing? You had asked about education. Some of you have asked about Second Amendment. Do you know that formal action is a 60-day requirement under the constitution? Now, I think in modern-day times, my personal opinion, why can't we start earlier if that's a constitutional principle? <coughs> so you see committees acting, but you don't see formal action. When a governor like Rick Perry or Greg Abbott says <coughs> emergency item, that's not like a catastrophe. It is an <coughs> exception to the 60-day rule in the Constitution. And a lot of people say, what's the emergency on this? Well, it's not a declared emergency, it's allowing us to vote early. Now, the deadline for filing bills was March 13th. And then we are starting actually yesterday. So we're right on schedule. Even though it looks like, why have you been here two months? We are actually right on schedule. Now, here's how kind of the program goes. Right now, the committees start getting larger in their activity. Now, you also got to remember, there's only 31 state senators, and there's 150 state representatives. And it takes <coughs> us a little longer to organize, just because of the size and the diversity. But in the end, we will all end at the same place. So right now is great timing that you're here. And the timing is, talk to your legislators if you have some time, talk to them here, because now is when we start raising the issues. I think if you go down the hall, the House 
is holding Second Amendment hearings today. So the very first week that we've started, we're starting these issues. Now let me tell you what we just passed, and that's why I had to leave you. And I want to talk about this a second. Human trafficking. Now many of you need to know that's a Republican issue as well as a bipartisan issue. And we need to be proud to take advantage of that. I am the joint author of that bill. Now human trafficking is the prostitution and slavery of boys and girls' children. And it happens in this state. It's awful. It's not human smuggling. That's bringing people into the country. I'm talking about the prostitution and slavery of children. And Interstate 10 is one of the biggest drop-off areas in this state. And it shouldn't even be in this state. And the significance of what we just did yesterday and today, and I am the calendar's chair, and that is your Speaker of the House here, but I want you to remember something. A Republican Speaker and a Republican House Calendar's Chair, what was the first bill set in this legislature by the House? Anti-human trafficking. <laughs> when we talk family values, take advantage. We did it. And the bill just passed as I was walking over here. But be proud as Republicans. We sometimes don't message, but we do a lot of good work. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about family values, there is nothing better than banning human trafficking. And the great thing is, it was a great cooperative effort between the House and the Governor's Office and the Senate. And ladies and gentlemen, who is the majority in all three of those groups? The Republicans. Now, I am what they call the House Calendars Chair. It's called the Complaint Department for the Texas House. I get blamed for everything, and I generally dress in black to send that message. But today, my office said I had to be more St. Patty's Day oriented, so I have a green tie. Here's what I want you to understand about the calendars. The calendars are 15 people that receive bills and they go through it like any committee. There's not a lot, we always are said secrecy, it's not. It's 15 people that review the bills and we get a lot of duplication. But this is what I want to ask you as Republicans. If you're interested in a bill, you had indicated education, the choice issue. I know I have some folks that are interested in transportation. I agree with Lois, I am not a toll person. But if you have, I have a system set up. If you come to my office, where is Shelby? Shelby in here? She's outside. She's outside. Come to my office, it's GW5. And I have a system set up. I have green cards and red cards. And you as the public can come fill it out and tell me what bills you support and what you don't. And it is private information that you're giving me. But you have an opportunity to provide us say so on how this system's going. So I encourage you. And I'm not very far. Rita, sure good to see you over there. She has been a great help. She helped me in the redistricting process. We've got to be very good friends. But I want you to know if you have ideas on some of these bills. And a lot of times that you understand, I may get, like on transportation, I may get 20 bills and some are duplicated. And we have to filter that, and a lot of times I get this question, well, why is this bill that helped McLennan County taking so long? <coughs> well, when it comes to me, I also have to make sure it meets the Constitution and if there's fiscal impact. Because the one great thing about the Republican Party <coughs> is fiscal responsibility. You don't want to file and pass a bunch of bills that you find out taps funds or causes increase of costs. 
So it's an interesting process. It's not that complicated, but I like reading about it in the blog. Sometimes I didn't even know what it is. <coughs> but what I'm encouraging you to do is to learn the process and come by the office. And when you have ideas, come by and fill a sheet out. And if you can't, you call my office and we'll note it. So I want you to know it's open government to the best. I see in the back that I'm getting called to urban affairs. Is that what it is? Uh, just one second. I will come back a little later so you can grab me if you've got some questions and things. So I will come back so you can ask. Let me give you some final statistics. I will let you know that uh, I have always been a term limit supporter. And some of you probably are, and some of you probably are not. <coughs> but let me give you some interesting information. Remember I told you when I came in, I came in in 1989. You weren't born yet. No, you know, when you're throwing a softball, you just say yes. <laughs> there you go. Let me give you some interesting statistics. Even though I was gone 11 years, in your Texas house, there are only three Republicans who were here in 1989. That's term limits right there. But why is that important? Because from the Republican Party, we need history as well as newness. Education finance is in the courts. My opinion, too many things we pass are in the courts. But education finance is in the courts. And do you know the last time we went through this, basically, was in the 2000s and then in the early 1990s. So the history for the Republican Party does matter. I came in in 1989, and the only two people left in the legislature are Senator Troy Frazier. He was a mere house member back in 1989. He's a very good friend. And then Sylvester Turner, a Democrat from Houston. Those are the only three people left for my original class. And then I think he's running for mayor, so I could end up, I, I won't make any predictions for you. Mm -hmm. But my point is, there's only 12 people, I think, that are left in the legislature since 1989. So you do have a lot of change. You do, and I'm not saying that there's any negative. I'm saying it's good to have a good combination of history and a good combination of experience and a good combination of newness. And I encourage my three kids to get involved, and they're all involved in their different ways uh, helping the Republican Party. And so I want to tell you all it means quite a bit that you can. Because I can go into the legislature and say my Republican groups were there. And i got to throw a side note. The uh, Republican women organizations, when I ran in 2008, they were a strong backbone for me. They were a strong backbone for me. And I've, I never forget the strength that they provide. And all the groups that are represented here today applaud yourselves because you all play a function. And in the end, we're going to make Texas, Texas, a better, better place. And I want you to know that the final comment is this. We're going to do well. We've got great management in place. We've got you. And we got money. And I can tell you that by the end of June 1st comes, the Texas legislature is going to do well. I can't speak about Washington, D.C. That's a topic for another session. <coughs> But for the state, you're going to end up very good, very positive. We do, by the way, need to watch the international issue on oil and gas. We do need to watch that because it can impact us. But we are going to do well. You're going to be very, very satisfied. And it's good because we're, we're positioned very strongly in this legislature. I want to thank Angie Flores. Angie works with me. And then she's part of the SREC. So you have good eyes and ears inside the county. Tom Meckler, who you just elected, is a very good friend. Tom uh, had a very good connection.
from in Corpus Christi. We got to know each other over the years. And I'm just proud that you all came here. It gives me strength. Anyway, I'm going to have to stop because they're signaling me. I will introduce Angie. Do you want me to introduce the next? Again, I'll come back and you grab me over here on the side on any questions that you have. Some things I can tell you, some I can't because we just basically physically started the voting process this week. And give you a big example, you know how many bills I have in calendars right now? Eleven. That's good limited government right there. I can tell you. But thank you all for coming. This time, let me introduce the next speaker. As I told you, there are only two South Texas legislators who are Republicans. We basically represent the area. My good friends from the Valley are here. And they are coming our direction, and they've been a very good support group of the Valley to Corpus Christi, and I thank you. But the next gentleman, he is, the difference between he and I is he's good looking and he has hair. <laughs> But he represents the Claiborne County Zone, the Beeville Zone, the Jim Wells County Zone, and San Patricio County. And he's a great addition and a great helper. He's a great friend. He's the chairman, Rita, of the redistricting committee that you and I worked on. So let's give a good applause and to our good friend, the new chairman of redistricting, Mr. J.M. Lazar. Thank you.